Hey guys, welcome to In The Chair with The Salon Guy. I'm your host, Steven Marinaro, and I like to interview people that inspire me so that they can inspire you. Today I'm with Andre Chevelli, Vice President of Milioni Enterprises. Andre, how are you today, man? Good, good. Nice to be here, man. Excited. Very excited. excited. Well, you, you know, you're one of those guys that is a really big inspiration to myself. You've got so much energy, and I think it's important that people you know, look up to other people like that, you know, and, and I've always looked up to people like that. And, and I think that nowadays with so many different things going on in the world, people need to find tours of inspiration. So you're that you're one of those guys to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Andre, I want to start off with, you know, what's happened to you in the last 10 years of your life? Well, first I want to say thanks for being here. And uh, I know the last video that we did got 43,000 views in like two days. <laughs> so I know that if you're going to do something, it's going to be big. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here and part of this. Uh, in the chair because I think that's awesome and, and I think people today uh, you know need inspiration I think there's a tremendous amount of negative energy in the world and people are getting caught in that and they really have to kind of have a new thought process and how to you know achieve the things they want to achieve and the last 10 years has been uh, um, you know an amazing uh, you know climb for me I think uh, but I think it all comes from the, the stem you know the thought process that uh, what you, you know, you really can control much more with your mind and positive thinking than you really ever thought before. And I think that was a dramatic change for me um, in the last, you know, 10 years and really the last five more than anything, I would say, you know, after watching the movie The Secret and, and getting a, a different perspective on, you know, the, that your mind and what you project is so much stronger than you've ever thought and that you could actually control your destiny and, and make things happen that you dreamed of. You, you so, watch the, I, I watched The Secret yeah. and I, it messed me all up. I swear <laughs> to God, it, because, because in that, move, that whole thing is like, don't think about it. So, and then so I was trying hard not to think about things, but I kept thinking about not thinking about it. So <laughs> like, it really, it really that, I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people that talk about that and they, and they feel like that really helped them, but you know, um, it's really interesting you say that. And I, I wanna get back to that a little bit later. Uh, take us on a journey of how you're, you're a vice president of a very large company. Mm -hmm. How did you get to this point? Because there's, there's people that say, you know, I want to be an executive, I want to be a VP. H how did you get to where you are now? Well, you know, I, I, you know, my father was a hairdresser, champion hairdresser, and uh, you know, won a tremendous amount of awards. And he got me into the business, started in sales, and uh, worked my way up through sales into management, and then from management moving up through the ranks. But I, you know, I've always been one to challenge myself and, uh, you know, think high, you know, shoot high and uh, stay focused on your goals, you know, and, uh, you know, my father, you know, uh, if you look at his life, he had accomplished so many things and I always had someone to look up to because he was a champion in both in boxing, he was a champion um, in uh, gymnastics. He was a black, he got the black belt at 71 years old, the what? oldest black belt in the United States for Tiger, Tiger Shulman. Wow. He became a champion runner and he was ranked fifth in the world in running. Um, he was a senior Olympic champion and then, and then a hairdressing champion on top of that. He won over 400 awards in hairdressing. So I think he set the standard for me to always want to like push, push higher, shoot higher, uh, never accept anything less than winning, you know, and, and I think he instilled that drive and that's kind of like, you know, how I, I did the same thing with sales. I got into sales and just kept pushing and pushing, you know, but uh, trying to inspire people along the way though. You know? Yeah, because people look at executives as, you know, they could be somewhat stuffy sometimes, you know, and they say, oh, how did this guy, you know, how did he get that position? I want that position. Mm -hmm. And I, I think with a lot of layoffs going on today in, in you know, the corporate America, the ones that are keeping their jobs are the, are the people that are likable, that people can look up to, they can communicate with, Right, do you agree on that? The, the, for me, I think the key, to, the key for any executive or anybody is you have to bring positive energy with you. You have to you know, emit positive energy and to everybody you walk in. When you walk into a room, you want the room to light up because you're bringing that energy. And the problem is, is that it, society has made it just way too easy to think negative and act negative. 
So, you know, you turn on the news and the television, you see all these horrible things happening because the news has decided that negative cells and that negative energy is the way to go, but it's actually the opposite. You know, the more positive people you surround yourself, the more positive energy you surround yourself, the more people are gonna gravitate you like a magnet. And that's the thought process, it's very simple. You know, good attracts good, bad attracts bad. You know, and your thoughts become things. Your thoughts become things. And I used to have this statement about, you know, people always talk about their dreams and what they want to achieve. To me, a dream is nothing more than a future reality because it's not necessarily a dream anymore. Mm -hmm. It's something that if you were to focus and you believe in with all of your intent, keep all yourself in alignment with a positive energy that it actually will it'll happen so it's not a dream anymore for me it's it's just a future reality so i think people just have to understand and have to look at themselves and say okay am i bringing this kind of energy when you know you look at yourself in the mirror and decide if you are bringing that energy if not you you have to start to focus on it and and bring it out and know the way you walk in the way you shake hands the way you look at people the way you feel and, it, and you'll get a sense of the energy and once you're starting to connect that way boy everything starts to come at you really quick but it's so easy to get up and say oh my job is horrible the thing, life is bad this is bad that that's the wrong way to go because it's only going to bring back more of the same <laughs> so you got to go the opposite and just keep yourself upbeat and say you know what I'm, I'm thank God for what I have and, and, and things and, and you know stay positive and all of a sudden these changes will happen so fast and the beauty is is that I think with that thought process it doesn't matter if you're broke you're, you're, you've had uh, you've been abused or, or you've been you know whatever your issues have been in life you can start today and, and change it tomorrow but you start with the thought you know and start to think of the things you want to achieve but the problem is most people don't spend enough time thinking about what they really want to do. Hmm. And they, they, you know, you say, what do you want to do in life? Well, I want to be, I want to be a doctor. Okay, mm-hmm. well, how much time do you actually think about being a doctor? Or I want to be a good person, or I want to achieve these things. They need to spend more time focusing on that. And, and as they do that, it, things will happen fast, and mm-hmm. it'll happen for them. Wow. Yeah. What I just so. got a, sh- a jolt of, <laughs> oh, I mean, my God, man, what you're saying is yeah. pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is something that's really important. You know, what are some of the key strategies that you apply to your life daily, um, you know, personally and, and professionally, like every day, you know, this is how I have to act and what I have to do in, the, in those, those areas, because it's really important. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, everybody talks about planning and, you know, uh, you know, really focusing on the game plan and, you know, building a strategy and then focusing on it. But in essence, um, you know, it, it's all about go, you know, today, what we do every day now is I go to work and I say, I want to make history. I want to do something great. And everybody around you starts to get like, uh, it's like, you know, infectious that mm-hmm. they want to do something great. And we try to push the boundaries every day to a point. Sometimes when you're feeling like nervous, we're, we feel good because we've pushed ourselves further than we've ever pushed before. Mm-hmm. And we're in the habit of doing that. So we come in, come into the office of guys, we're going to make history today. We're going to do something great, do something we've never done before. You know, you, you got to take risks. You have to take some risks. You got to think out of the box, um, you know, and just, you, you know, what happens is, the problem, the things that happen is fear overtakes all that. See, yeah. fear makes you afraid to do something or you're afraid to take a chance. You're afraid to break out of the box. Once you start eliminating the fear, all of a sudden it becomes completely different and the things that you you know, shoot for, they happen. How do you, how do you eliminate the fear though? That's, you, a, that's the, the biggest challenge. The, the biggest challenge, well, you have, to, you have to start, little steps is, you know, sometimes, you know, when you do something good, pat yourself on the back a bit, you know, and mm-hmm. say, you know what? You know this little thing that I accomplished today is a good start, man. You know, and and then then you give yourself another goal, and then you accomplish that goal, and then you say, all right, we're on a roll, we're on a roll. And that little voice that's talking to you is really, you know, uh, uh, you know, has to you have to really be in sync, and it starts to become a chain reaction because, you know. But here's what happens: most people either have bad relationships or surround themselves with negative people, hmm. so they're already caught in the problem, and they don't they don't have the courage to break away from that. So you have to kind of surround yourself with people who want to be positive, you know, and want to bring up, you know, bring the energy up. And all of a sudden things start to click very fast. And then you're actually surprised how fast it happens because you actually can control the speed of these things by staying in that, you know, in the zone, what I call it, you know, more of in that zone where the fear is gone, the belief is there and it comes quick. Wow. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, fear... You know, I've always learned that knowledge destroys fear because people have different types of fears. You know, I have a fear they don't know how to do something, but they're afraid to do it because they don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes people are afraid to, you know, to give a speech or they're afraid to do, go a different route. To, I mean, it's, 
fear, con- you're right, it controls a lot of us. But yeah. what's, what's important is that you said, and I say this too, is little baby steps, little accomplishments that you pat yourself on the back. Yeah. You don't, you know, it's okay to think big, but I always <clears> tell people, you know, say if you wanna, if you wanna you know, accomplish something, you wanna run two miles instead of one mile, make that your goal and accomplish it and say, right. wow, I did that. Yeah, that's right? absolutely right, yes. And, but, but you know, the thing that, and you've seen me do this a hundred times, you know, with these shows that we've done, and we've sold out 31 shows in a row, but uh, is, is to go in with the, although it's, a, maybe I have some, we have some big visions mm. of what we want to accomplish, but stay small. And the thing is, I want to do the greatest show, or I want to do a really good job, or I want to do this, and that's all it is. You just stay right in that little zone of good. Mm-hmm. Once you're in the zone of good, then everything comes like a magnet. And, and then it starts to track into you. And basically, what, by not getting too overcomplicated, because once you get it complicated, you get fear. Hmm. What if this happens? What if this goes wrong? Sorry, what if question. I make a mistake? What if I say something wrong? That not, that already, you're out of alignment with the, the thought process of what you want to achieve. So if you keep it simple, direct, and just your intentions are all good. Whatever it is, if your intentions are good, it will happen good. Hmm. And then once you believe more that, you know what, I'm just out to do really good, and try and help people and do more all of it changes because you're surrounding yourself with all of the good intentions and the other people who want to do good and then it magnifies itself into achieving what you want to achieve interesting i, I agree 100%. it's an amazing theory wow but, now you, but it works <laughs> it works you you mentioned now for people that don't yeah. necessarily know who you are or what you do you mentioned mm-hmm. i mean you're, you're vice president of a right. very large beauty distributor um and tell us a little about that and then okay. also you mentioned the shows that you do too. Tell us how how big that is in what you do. Okay, well, the the thing that we do here is, um, you know, we run, I run a a large beauty supply company that's a great family company, been in business since 1954, and we sell to salons professional hair care products. So um, that's our business. I've been in that for 28 years. Uh, But it's all about service. It's all about customers, which is the same in any other business. It's servicing the customer and all that. And... uh, you know, it's it's a great business. Uh, people, it's all relationships, just like anything else. It's all relationships, but again, it comes down to um, your your commitment, your dedication, and your caring about what you do. And and if you're going out there with the good intentions, I'll keep going back to it. If you go out with good intentions in any business you're in, anything you do, you're going to get more good back. Hmm. And once you understand that theory, uh, you know, it's a complex universe. I mean, we live in a huge complex universe and everybody sits around and thinks, you know, how does this really work? Mm-hmm. And you know, you, you, you know, sometimes, you know, I've sat there and I said, wow, you know, we're in the Milky Way galaxy, which is, and there's 200 to 400 billion other galaxies. It's 186 trillion miles big, uh, light years, 186,000 light years, and every light year is six trillion miles. So you start to realize <laughs> how big of a complex universes and galactic system we're in here on little old planet Earth. <laughs> and you realize that the way things work are different than maybe what we've learned. You know, hmm. you watch TV, you watch all these things, they don't work like that. That's what we've created, this own little world of thinking that I'm gonna react based on something I saw on TV or read in the paper. It doesn't work that way. It's it's a totally different, you know, world. And I think that one of the things, and, and I know it's deep, but basically the world is everything is based on energy right, okay right. einstein found that out you know years and years ago that you know mass equals energy so everything in the world has energy energy is a, is fast moving particles so everything that we think is solid and and is solid in your body or, or metal or everything is actually not it's actually fast moving particles those fast moving particles give off vibration everything has vibrational frequency in the world in the entire galaxies our brain power has vibrational frequency. We've been able to now measure our brain waves through, through computer systems. So our brain works on vibrational frequency. So if all objects and everything in the universe works vibrationally, our brain thoughts have effect on everything. Hmm. That's the theory. So if your, your brain, sometimes you would think, we, we grew up thinking that what we think in our mind stays in our mind, it doesn't. It actually travels vibrationally frequency. So if you're giving off a positive vibration, it's actually traveling vibrationally, which can be measured by computer, and it's attracting to additional vibrational positive frequencies. Positive thoughts are much thousands of times more stronger than a negative thought. And they're able to actually now really uh, see on computers this vibrational frequency. And I say, people say, well, how do you know this? I said, well, if you walk into a room and you've ever said, look, I can cut the tension with a knife, (laughs) right? Actually, you're not really 
nobody's touching you or nobody's giving you any attention, but you're picking up the vibrational, negative vibrational frequency of everybody in that room. So this is the biggest change in thought that could, anybody could ever understand because what's happened now is the mind has much more power than we've ever thought. Hmm. So if you want to change things in your life, you want to change things around you, start giving off the vibrational frequency of positive energy and positive thought, and it brings more back. It's all, it's a theory of how the universe works. And that's something that, you know, I took some time out and learned about it and did some research to say, wow, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's, it's not based on what we look in the papers and rumors and, and, the, and the things that we've come to understand, like this is, I'm gonna react now because I, I watched this on the news. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> and you know, and if people think that, well, you know, I'm getting over on somebody or I'm scanning on somebody or anything like that, you're giving out tremendous negative vibration. And guess what? Those people end up in this negative thing. It's like a spiral effect. They just keep getting more negative in their life and then they wonder why there's more negative. Well, it's that's, all in front of us. It's all in front I mean, of you. So this, the theory is real simple. You act good, be good, good comes back. But you, you know, so I, I think that's been my theory all throughout everything I do. And I've stuck with that and I can see the results have dramatically changed in the last five years from where I was to where I am now. So, yeah. but, but do you feel that, you know, what you're saying makes, makes a lot of sense. And I try to, I try to portray that and, and believe in that in my own theories and what I, and you know, I want to feel good and I'll get that back. Cause I have seen results where whatever I put back out, yeah. I get back. Yeah. But do you, do you feel like. You know, or other, do other people have to be in tune to that to connect with you, or because you can feel almost alone? I feel like that's more the minority of people that think that way. You know, you go into a room and it's like you might want to cut the tension because you don't feel. But you know, is it from one person? Is it from many people? Is there only a certain amount of people that can understand what you're or feel the same way that you're, that, or what you believe in? Or? Well, you know, I think I think that. Uh yeah, that's the unfortunate part because it's much more easy to be negative. Mm -hmm. So the world is comfortable saying, you know, how's your job? Oh, it's terrible. How's, how's everything at home? Ah, it's no good. We're, we're comfortable. We've right. become comfortable with this negative thought process. So the thing is start to get people to change that and to show them, you know, they start to, you have to start talking about it and getting them involved with that. Everybody around me now knows that's the way we work. That's the way I work. And everybody jumps in with the positive energy and we've like, move mountains in, 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 in where no one's, you know, we've just gone light years ahead with that thought process because everybody's on the same page. Right. So the people, it becomes like, you know, contagious and people want to be around people, but we're so used to talking negative, acting negative and getting and sticking around negative situations that we're caught, we're caught in that trap. And that's the, the biggest thing I can, I can say today is once you realize that and you start to think that way, boy, things will change like lightning fast. And, and there's nothing you can't accomplish if you're really focused in on them and you spend the time thinking about it and you, you stay focused in on it, you know? Now, that, but, yeah. but talking about like, you know, people and, and putting out things and having goals and visions, I mean, you've been doing some really big things over the last couple of years. You, you've been pr producing, which I've been helping you with, and, yes. and you do, but you really, because of your thought process, because you said, you know what, I want to start doing things that's not about me, it's about people in the industry, it's about people producing these amazing hair shows, producing these great events, you know, drawing, you know, thousands and thousands of people. You go from that, from one element to being around all those types of people, to then being in Yankee Stadium around <laughs> more, with more people. I mean, you, you talk about that. I mean, talk about, you know, the events you throw for, for well, the industry yeah. and then go into the story about Yankees. Yeah, I have like two, two different, two dual lives going on. <laughs> but, but yeah, so in the beauty industry, we just, we, we decided with this new thought process to say, you know what, we, you know, I think the world with the economy and the way things were going, people were very down, just in general, in, in any trade, any industry. So somebody had to inject some life into everybody and say, you know what, it's not all that bad. There's things we can do and we can do things great. And we started with that positive energy and said, let's put on a show, let's inspire people, okay? It could be done anywhere. And so we went out with the approach that we were gonna do things to inspire people. And uh, we put on event after event that gained following and gained, you know, uh, people connected with the message and connected that our intentions were great and that they wanted to be inspired and motivated. Because you know, when no one's talking, somebody's gotta stand up and talk. You know, if you look at somebody like Joe Olstein, if you watch him on TV and he packs that theater with, you know, it's unbelievable. But he keeps giving out good message, you know. And so we started with these shows and we brought in some amazing people. We had Joetta Diggs, uh, four-time, uh, uh, Joetta Clark, um, four-time um, Olympic champion. 
uh, amazing speaker. We brought in uh, Tony DeBlois, who was a musical savant who sang in 20 different languages. Uh, amazing, you know, people. Uh, Michael Beckwith from the movie The Secret, we actually brought into one of our events, and Michael Beckwith did a whole presentation. Wow. At the, yeah. And of course, all the great hairdressers started to gravitate to us because they knew we were going to go out and try to do something different. So, make a long story short, you know, we've had 31 sold out shows in a row, probably 20,000 people in the last three shows that have come. And we did the Taj Mahal, you were all part of it, and you know, sold out the Taj Mahal with 4,000 people. We just did 8,000 people, October show in Edison, and uh, the Vidal Sassoon tribute, and all the things that you've helped us with. And, uh, but it, 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 what happened is the same thing. It's, you know, you go out with, we're gonna do the greatest shows ever, and everybody runs to the gravitates to the energy. Hmm. And now, whenever we do something, all of a sudden everybody, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And that's what it's all, it starts with the same core process is just, I wanna do something really great and I believe in it a thousand percent, I'm committed to it and we're gonna do it together and all of a sudden the people come. Hmm. You know, people wanna get away from the negative. They wanna get away. Right. And the same thing, you know, I use that same process. I, I was in, um, on the other side of my life, hmm. I, I was a collector as a young kid. Um, uh, at 10 years old, I was collecting baseball cards like most kids growing up, but for some reason, I, I liked the older cards. They were like tobacco cards. They were in tobacco packs from 1910, mm -hmm. and I was buying them at the flea markets for 25 cents, and I amassed this huge collection. So by the time in high school, I got a car with some of the cards, and I kept this massive collection, and then I kept uh, getting involved with buying and selling and buying and selling and for over the years. So i always been in the collectible field. And then one day when Yankee Stadium opened, 2009, I went to Yankee Stadium with my fiance, and there was these big pictures of baseball cards outside the Yankee Museum, and I was like, wow, they gotta be some great baseball cards there. And at the time, I went in and there wasn't any cards there. So I was like, I said to her, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in here one day. You pictured it. Yeah, I pictured it in my mind. I said, you know what? I'm gonna come in here. I said, Deb, I'm gonna be in here, and I'm gonna be selling baseball cards and collectibles in Yankee Stadium in two weeks. And she said, there is no way. You're completely out of your mind. There's no way you can do this. This is Yankee Stadium. There's no, and I just went, I, I then, you know, and, and then there comes the fear, right? Should I call? Shouldn't I call? Should I do? Shouldn't I do? How do you even get, how do you even? But, but that's the typical thing with anything. It was an interview. You mm -hmm. went for a job yeah. interview. You went for, meet somebody for the first time. Okay. You went on a date. You had met, whatever it is, you start, the fear comes in. But I didn't even go there because I know better. So the only thing that I focused on was the dream of getting into Yankee Stadium and doing it. And I was going to do it and there was nothing going to stop me. And so I called the guy like 50 times. Finally get a hold of my, uh, we're like best friends now, Mike Laparo. Um, general manager of the whole Yankee Stadium and we had a meeting and he they started asking me had a lot of executives around asking me about what I knew about collectibles and the funny story is he had a card that uh, he showed me this card it was a Babe Ruth card mm -hmm. and he uh, showed me this card said he had given World Series box seats to somebody he knew uh, and the guy had given him a card on behalf of the gift of the box seats I took the card that they all laugh about this now as I threw, threw the card, I threw the card, he said I thought it was worth a, a Babe fortune, Ruth card. a Babe Ruth card, I threw it across the, uh, I threw it across the table and they all were like, what are you doing, you're crazy, that card's worth a lot of money, I said the card was fake, it actually was a reproduction, you could tell it was and fake, I knew, right? I knew in like two seconds I threw it, they were shocked and, and they were just flipped out at the point and then I said here's my card when you find out it's not real call me and then two days later they found that it was a fake, I, I had known what I, you know, I was the expert. And to make a long story short, he says, okay, pick a spot uh, anywhere in the stadium. Um, we'll have you set up, and I want to have it done by Friday. So here it was Tuesday, and the opening day was Friday. And so we were like, I went to the museum, uh, which is on section 210, second floor in the stadium, and there was a huge wall there. And I said, this is where we got to be because people go in the museum, they see all this uh, vintage uh, merchandise, you know, Babe Ruth, Garrick, DiMaggio, Mantle, and then they come out and buy it. And so, boom, we set up on Friday, three days, and we've been there ever since you know, four years now, going out to our fifth season, and uh, it's been quite amazing. And, and when they, and our first year there, once I got into the stadium, the, the, the fans have been awesome. They love the collectibles. We've become friends with everybody. I got to work with Jorge Posada on his charity. I got to meet Jeter, A-Rod, all the players, <laughs> you know. Um, and when the first year, 2009, we were there, my brother also helped me. And when they won the World Series, they had called us back to the, uh, to the executive room and they gave uh, us Yankee World Series rings here, you can see, <laughs> and we have uh, Yankee. They gave us the uh, 2009 Yankee World Series ring to me and my brother, and it was an amazing you know, accomplishment for us, and we've been there ever since. And 
you know so it was it had started that and really just to jump back my mother was um, my biggest fan I was a baseball player and I had a contract in 79 to play minor league ball and she died two weeks later oh. and after she passed away I never really made it back okay. into, into baseball and uh, and I was always like feeling like I let her down I let her down so here you dial back 30 years later 79 2009 I end up back in Yankee Stadium wow. and get the World Series ring so the message here is that dust those dreams off mm -hmm. get them back out believe in them again and and you know what with that new thought process you can make them happen because it was 30 years between being a player disappointing and feeling i let my mother down and 30 years later i dusted that dream off and got it back and started this new set of thinking and all of a sudden boom i was there world series ring and we're going to fifth season and they just won uh, yankees won major league baseball retailers of the year and we were part of that wow. this year 2012 that and is. they've only given it out four times so what a, what an honor to, and you know and also to meet all of the uh the families, we, you know, the Mickey Mantle's family and Babe Ruth's family and all the families, it's just, it's unbelievable. So, 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 so that's, that's incredible. Yeah, it's man. an incredible story, but you know. But, but there's, yeah, there's gotta be the Yankee, Yankees fans that are gonna be watching this. They can actually go Yankee Stadium and see you? Yeah, at section 210, which is right next to the museum, second floor, and we're all set up there with all the Yankee collectibles, all the history of the Yankees. And you're the only guy in the stadium Doing it. We do, yeah. We're the only ones doing the baseball cards and the yearbooks and scorecards. And, wow, man. And Steiner has an autograph store downstairs. We do all the baseball cards and, and ticket stubs and all the collectible stuff. But it's it's amazing that, you know, you just the dream had so far gone. And then all of a sudden you're in there in Yankee Stadium and I'm on the field and Jeter is standing next to me <laughs> and I'm saying hello to Jorge Posada and, and Mariano. And I've, I've had catches in the outfield with Andy Pettit. And wow. I've, I've caught balls with Joe Girardi and his son on the field after the stadium's closed and nobody in there. And it's just, I'm sitting in Yankee Stadium and there's nobody there. And it's Andy Pettit and his son. And I'm catching balls for the son and throwing to Andy Pettit Jeez. in the outfield. And no one's there. It's, it's totally oh surreal. God. And I can tell you this, if I had that old thought process and I thought, and I stuck with what I used to think, you know, and had that fear and that negative, there's no way I would be doing this. But I, that new thought was, you know what? I can do it, mm -hmm. and people can do it. Anybody can do whatever they want to do. They just gotta get to re, re, rethink their mind. So I think this, what you're doing by getting this message out is so important because people need to change their thought process, you know? Yeah, well thank you. Uh, what's another thing that's really important? Do you have any role models growing up? I mean, people that you looked up to that said, you know what, this is the, and even to, that you, you cherish to this day, this is somebody who I really, you know, looked up to. Yeah, I, I, you know, it has to be my father because my father was, uh, you know, someone who would always challenge himself mm -hmm. and always push. And, you know, it was all about pushing to try to be, you know, just keep trying to push. And he was amazing at what he did. And he inspired so many people over the years. You know, when he, and I'll never forget, I, when he passed away and we laid out everything he had accomplished, mm -hmm. it was, people were in shock because you saw somebody that at 19 was a gymnastic champion doing handstands on a 40 foot uh, you know, diving board. You know, and then you saw somebody who went to the army. I didn't mention that. He was a boxing champion in the army. Oh my gosh. Then after the army, he comes out to be a hairdresser and he becomes a hairdressing world famous, tied with Vidal Sassoon for number one hairdresser in the world in 1971. And then after that, he gets into, uh, you know, he got into uh, us running. After my mother passed away, he decided to take his energy to running and, and he went became you know world champion runner and then after he was diagnosed with terminal cancer he went out and said i will get my black belt at 71 with terminal cancer and i'll never forget tiger shulman you know gyms which is across the country <clears throat> he had to be in competition and he was getting beat up in competition oh trying to get a black belt at 71 at 71 with terminal cancer and it was just off his like 10th chemo and he fought it out and he got the black belt and i said tiger and I went to Tiger and I said, Tiger, do you know he had terminal cancer? He goes, You're, are you crazy? Uh, you didn't tell me this? I said, no, he wanted to do it legit. And he got a legitimate black belt. And you know, um, Tiger actually put his picture, Tiger did commercials with my dad after that and put his picture in all the gyms in the window. And he did a huge tribute to my father after he passed away. But I would say he was the person that, you know, kept me always trying to shoot for more, you know? Uh, I think more people need to find sources of inspiration you know, I, my mother who passed away, you know, she's always with me, you yeah. know, and, and, but I think it's crucial that people, there's a lot of lost souls out there. And I think where I am today is because of me looking up to other people. Yeah. And, and I think, and you know, if you can agree on this, people need to start finding a source of inspiration because that's why these people are where they are. Yeah. Right? You know, you have to surround yourself with people that 
that are inspiring and have that good energy, you know? And you have to celebrate your life and celebrate what you're doing. And you have to start with yourself because you have to be proud of yourself and, you know, acknowledge yourself first. You have to love yourself before you can love others. Michael O'Rourke always used to say that, mm -hmm. you know? But I think you have to just start in a good place. And, um, you know, I've been to tons of beauty schools doing seminars for, for kids. And I'm amazed at some of the kids' thought process at this point. And they certainly need leadership and they need some people to look up to, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of mixed messages out there. And I hope this video gets to be shared throughout the world because, you know, Gangnam, Gangnam style, the music, <laughs> it's kind of cute and it's, We're gonna do that it's fun <laughs> it's, it's fun and uplifting, but they need to hear stuff like this because, right. you know, they, they, there's so many little, like, little gimmicky things that you see on YouTube gets 20 million hits and, right. and you say, that's cute, but the people need the message, message mm -hmm. and they need to start thinking in the right way. I mean, we, we look on the, t you know, it's, you got wars going on in the Middle East, you have uh, hurricanes, it's all, like, it's amazing amount of things for people to deal with, but, you know, they have to get in the right frame of mind, and they need to be, with, you know, start to think differently, and it'll start to change things, and, uh, you know, positive energy has got has to win in the, in the end, you know, yeah. so. I've yeah. I've known you for some time now, and something that's really interesting is you you have a special gift, which <laughs> some people were going Andre like how do you <laughs> how can you predict something happening in my life, and it happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like are you is, how do you do it? And tell me about that. I mean, you probably don't even think about it, but well, I think you know I think um, I think unconsciously everybody you know might have an idea or something they want to do and then they end up doing it all right but they forget that it really was in their mind in the beginning you know they wanted to get a new car so they I'll give me an example and they were starting to think about that new car right and they kept focusing on that new car how nice it would look and and all of a sudden they get the new car well there was a reason there because their mind started to concentrate in on on this vision of having this car and you have to recognize that that's not just by luck mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that's by luck I think your, your mind has much more control over the things that happen to you, destiny, and, and it has much more effect on everything around you. So, you know, I think I started to zero in on this vision that I would have before I would do, let's say, a show or something. I would see the entire show. Hmm. So I would start to see it as, as you would see a video clip. Mm -hmm. And it would be me watching it as if I was in a movie theater watching this movie. And it would go in sections. It would, it, I would see a section, stop see another section, stop, see another section. And I started to get better at understanding that that's a vision and if I can capture that and focus in on that, it would actually happen. So it became watching you know, movies for me, like watching a movie. And then I would go out and execute what I saw in the movie. And, but, but then you, know, you were, you were pre but then also you, yeah, you then, were predicting yeah, something. Like, you're going, hey, Melissa, well, yeah, tomorrow yeah, yeah. you're buying yeah. a blue car. Yeah, yeah. And then they buy well, a <laughs> I think what happened there was I started to, um, do a little bit more research about this because everybody really has the vision. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, you know, they talk about a sixth sense, right? Everybody has, I think everybody's like, almost like, uh, well, let's, let's start with this. You only use 10% of your brain. Right. All right. Let's start with that. So there's 90% left to go, okay? Uh, maybe Einstein used 20 or 30%, but you know, uh, the fact is there's so much more about our brain that we don't know yet. It doesn't matter how much technologically advanced we are, we still don't know. So I think it's more like a radio station and you have, you have certain channels and you can develop these other channels. So if you develop the channel where the thought process of your vision, of vision, vision is like a channel and you're actually kind of like tuning into the future. And then by really staying in that tune and staying in alignment, that future comes to you. Um, almost like there's a lot of static. Mm -hmm. Static is like negative energy. You stay away from the negative energy, you stay more in tune with that vision. If you go off and get upset or get surrounded by negative people, what happens you go back to static like a radio trying to search that station. And if you really stay positive, all of a sudden, bingo, you're hit right on the station. And then what we were thinking of and what you were dreaming of starts to come right like a radio, radio wave. So huh. I think it's all the vibrational th th thought process. So what happened to me is I realized that and I started focusing on that to a point that I said, well, maybe I could even think about what's going to happen for somebody or or started to think about if someone passed away or, or started to like connect with the thought process. And so many times I was starting to predict things. Like you said, I was, I was predicting things for people to have happen because I was just tapping into this other sixth sense or maybe seventh sense. And you know, there's mediums, there's all kinds of clairvoyance. There's all these things. I'm not saying any of that. All I know is that 
if you can folk, learn that there's more to it and you start practicing a little bit on the vision and it could lead you down some you know different ways and i think i think everybody has it mm -hmm. i just think you got to tune in a little bit more you know <laughs> but we can't get to the tuning in because we're all upset because we're all negative right. we're all pissed everybody's upset this one's upset that one's quitting his job this one's angry uh you know and, and it, we're caught in that so how do we you can't you have to get away from that first clear your mind and start to say wait a minute i have a lot more uh, you know things I can do and more talent and more vision in my mind and that's really what it comes down to and and anybody could start at any point doesn't matter how many problems you have no matter what your issue is no matter how old no young but the world is always you're too slow you're too stupid you're too fat you don't have enough you can't you won't you shouldn't you couldn't you wouldn't and I am all about you can you will you would and you could so you know if you start thinking that you can all of a sudden your life is going to completely change dramatically but you know you ever hear when people say I should have I should have I go Stop, sh don't shoot on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't shoot on yourself, you know? <laughs> uh, all right, so, so we're gonna wrap things up. But before yeah. we do, I wanna ask you uh, five questions. You can, you can give me you know, one answer or however you wanna answer this. Um, first question, who's your favorite baseball player? Has to be Babe Ruth. Uh, I grew up... Um, you didn't grow up with him. <laughs> no, I grew up reading about Babe Ruth and I grew up idolizing him and I realized uh, he really changed the world of baseball and, and the world in general for sports. And um, he was a great pitcher before a great player, and people forget that. And he won a World Series of Boston before he won all the World Series with the Yankees. But, and I'm becoming friends with his granddaughter, um, Babe Ruth's granddaughter. I've done events with her, I've done signings with her, and I, you know, just to connect with the Ruth family and be friends with Linda Ruth Tossetti and her husband, Andy, and we're going to Cooperstown wow. this year, which I can't wait to go to Cooperstown with Babe Ruth's family. To go in the Babe Ruth we went to Cooperstown is going to be a dream come true. Wow. So I can't wait to do that. But That's huge. Yes. Uh, if you can have one famous singer just sing one song to you, one famous singer, who, who would it be? You know, I think I, I think recently with all the Vidal Sassoon tribute, I've become such a Beatles fan. You know, I really do. I love. So them. if you get the beat, you'd rather yeah, just like this, have the Beatles of, perform to you. I mean, the ones that obviously if they could all be here live here today. I think you know that Hey Jude the song that we we played and Revolution and and those songs from the Beatles to me are uh, they just bring a lot of inspiration out. And it, it was in an era of you know a lot of turmoil mm -hmm. and and they were kind of making a change to the turmoil. You know, there was goodness in their message and there was goodness in their music because they were trying to bring a positive energy in at the same time as there was turmoil. Right. And so that's what I'm kind of about. And so I think the Beatles is my, wow. my answer. That's that. pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. What, uh, in, in one or two words, what comes off the top of your head? What inspires you? Um, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a lot of things that inspire me and, you know, it could be, you know, people and that you know have nothing and they and they're giving to others and um, there's a lot of good people out there you know mm -hmm. I mean look at Hurricane Sandy how everybody came to help you know and uh, and I think that people the, the good energy has to win over the negative energy and I think this video and doing things like this is a movement in that direction but the really commitment the thing that has to happen is people now need to share this message with every single person they know because you have to start changing the tide of energy in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. The negative is coming on so strong. We've got to start pushing it back with the good energy and the good messages. So I encourage everybody to share this because th the bottom line is that more people start to think differently. And inspiring me is the people that do think different and are trying to bring good. You know, and trying to do good for people because you look at all that hurricane support. I live near the seaside and <clears throat> basically was wiped out, you know, and you got people coming from everywhere trying to help out. That's what inspires me because people, there's a lot of people who do care. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are good. A lot of people that, you know, and that's, that's what inspires me is the people like that that are doing it. So we got to keep, keep the message, message going. If you could be one person for one day, who, who would it be? <laughs> it's got to be Jeter. I got oh. <laughs> It's got to be Derek Jeter. You want to be him for one Yeah, oh, I think, you know, just, you Sing, know. If he was single or what? <laughs> uh, I just, the captain, you know, on, uh -huh. on Yankees, and you know, it's just something that he, he's a good. I mean, he's a good guy. He's just really quiet. He's really? very quiet. He goes about his business, and you know, it's all business with Derek. And I watch him every day. I go down before the games. Uh, as a matter of fact, before he broke the record for three thousand hits, mm -hmm. which we all know was incredible, I went down that morning, and I had my security friends get asked me to get me to Derek. 
Derek comes right up to me for the first time because Derek really doesn't say anything. And he mm. said hello to me and I said, Derek, you're going to get those 3,000 hits today. And he goes, yeah, I'm going to get him. And he put his hand up. I got a picture of him putting his hand up. And um, I'll never forget Reggie Jackson was standing behind Derek. And it was me standing there, Reggie Jackson and Derek Jeter. No one was around. And Reggie was t pumping him and saying, today's going to be your day. You're going to get a home run today. You're going to get big hits today. This is going to be your best day. And I'm like, I'm looking around and nobody heard this. And then Derek went out and got five hits on the day, broke the record with a home run. Wow. I was, I felt, I was part of it. I was right there. So for me, d being, you know, Derek Jeter for a day would be great. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Last question. Uh, what's a short-term goal that you, that you want to achieve? Something, you know. You know, short-term goal is, is really, I've been having visions lately of, of actually, you know, um, giving speeches like, the, like what we're talking about here. And I've done, you know, I've done six or seven this year mm -hmm. to beauty schools, but I, I would love to talk in front of college students, a packed auditorium. And you know me, I can get up in front of 5,000, 10,000, it doesn't matter how big of an auditorium. Uh, I really starting to see this for some reason that I think I'm going to be doing that. And I, I would love to get the message out to the youth of, 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 of the world to start, instead of you know making some you know joke or some bicycle accident on YouTube become like the biggest thing, take this message, mm -hmm. send this around the world, let everybody know what this is all about. Let people start to change the thought process. The, the, good, the more that you can shed, you know, spread the goodwill, the more the goodwill is gonna come back to you. So I encourage you know, everyone who sees this to just don't let it go. You know, to then share it to everybody. Let's make this tremendous, and keep with you know keep a series of communication to everyone. Because what's going to happen is the more that starts to snowball, guess what? You just bring more good to everybody, mm -hmm. and it's got to start somewhere. And somebody has to step up to the plate, and every person who views this got to say, you know what? It's my responsibility. Boom! Let's let's spread it because that's spreading the goodwill, and that's where you start. You start right here, mm -hmm. and you spread it to the next, and to the next, and to the next. And then guess what? The more goodwill will come back to you by doing it. This this should be going viral. This that's, kind of stuff. That's you know what I'm what talking about. <laughs> this is what yeah. This is what's going to go viral, and this should go viral because that's what's going to spread it. And right. you know, it's like a chain letter. You know, you're spreading it big time. But this, the last thing I want to say is the people who are watching this today, okay, have more power to communicate a positive message like this than any civilization in the history of man. You think about that. Some of these YouTube videos get an incredible amount of hits. Oh, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, all of that. The group today, the you know, the people today who do this have more power ever in society to make to take the good and make the good outweigh the bad. All you gotta do is start spreading it. Hmm. You know? It couldn't be done, you know, twenty years ago. You didn't have all the, the communication technique to do it. So here we are in the twentieth century with all the technology in the world to spread more good real fast mm -hmm. than negative. But it starts here with this video going viral right after this. What do you think well, about that? You guys gonna, you're gonna follow through with my man, the song yeah. here. Let's start spreading it out there. Come on, everybody. Yep. Hit that share button and spread it out throughout the world, and all of a sudden that snowball is gonna happen. <laughs> well, you know, th th this show is now uh, about, you know, I'm not just bringing anyone on this. You know, I'm, I'm bringing on people that, that I look up to that have inspired me. Appreciate and, it. and for the people that look up to me, you know, I do this for them. Yeah, you know? it's, it's awesome. So it's, there's a lot of great people out there with a lot of great messages, you know. Yeah. But but we got to start somewhere. We start here today and spread it out, and all of a sudden things will start to change. They happen one t day at a time, one step at a time, one share button at a time. Awesome, Andre. <laughs> thank you so much you, for being on uh, my show so in the chair. Thank you, guys. Stay tuned for another episode of in the chair of the thank Swan you very Guy. Much. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.